Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Redfern. Welcome to my lesson in uh, using geometry and structural design in particular for bridges. So geometry can seem kind of boring and stupid sometimes. When am I ever gonna use this? And the exciting thing is it does come in handy and we use geometry a lot. So just basic shapes can uh, still be really exciting. So the first basic shape we're gonna look at would be a circle. So a circle, we see a lot in nature, such as with falling fruit. We also see them in things such as uh, helmets, storage tanks, and uh, all across a variety of things. Uh, very simply, what is the area of a circle? You should all know pi r squared. And the volume of a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed. Um, these we use a lot in classes such as thermodynamics, which I teach, uh, as well as um, a wide variety of classes, so you should definitely know those quickly. Um, circles are really important because they distribute weight and loads across the entire arch, and there's uh, not one point that's getting a higher load than the others. So they're really good at distributing loads, which makes them powerful. The second structure will be a triangle. So in looking at a triangle, we're having the load distributed across a wide base, which provides a lot of strong structural elements. Uh, for things such as dog toys, for my dog, who you can see is sleeping right behind me. <laughs> um, so triangles are really great because they stack well together, they're really easy to combine, and then they, once again, distribute load onto a wider base. So we see triangles a lot in long-lasting structures, the most famous one probably being the pyramids. These are from the ancient times, they're still standing. Uh, in terms of the area of a triangle, uh, one half height times width. And then for the volume of a pyramid, it would be a length times width times height divided by three. The third structure we're gonna look at will be an arch. So similar to a circle, the same type of weight distribution, load distribution. We see things in columns and also different types of arches, such as on this little coffee cup, can be really strong um, structural elements used in a lot of design. We see them in the St. Louis Gateway Arch, which is a national monument, and uh, things like hammocks and Spider webs are also arch-like in structure, but they're kind of inverted. We call this a catenary curve. So when something is arching this way or something is arching downwards, we have an arch or a catenary curve. And we use these a lot in building and bridge design. Last but not least will be the hexagon. So hex means six, hexagon, six-sided structure. We see these a lot in nuts and bolts and in different building materials. Um, as well as in things such as honeycombs, uh, corn, a lot of stone formations, stop signs, and um, turtle shells. That was my favorite example. But we, we use these a lot because they stack together well, they uh, are really strong structural elements, and they occur a lot naturally. So we're going to look specifically at more how geometry works in bridge design. So looking at first an arch, which we discussed the arch is going up, catenary curve is going down, and it, we see these a lot in things such as aqueducts, different buildings in your houses, uh, mosques, old type of courtyards and museums and buildings. Typically arches are supported by columns and um, they are used for spanning openings or within walls. We can also have kind of a 3D type of extended arch called a barrel vault. And this is uh, a, a continuous surface of semicircles. So it's like if you took an arch and you extended it out, as you can see in these photos here. They're really beautiful. Uh, you'll see them a lot in Europe or uh, museums and churches. And it's like setting a series of arches back to back side by side. So you can understand how there would be a lot of strength in taking an arch and then stacking them up next to each other. Triangles are 
probably the most commonly used in bridge structures. When we see triangles and bridges such as these, we call them trusses. So it's a system of triangles where the members are supporting each other by these upper and lower members of the bridge. And uh, we utilize a series of triangles in, in doing these truss structures. So you'll see them in, like I mentioned, bridges, also in stair railings, pedestrian walkways, uh, the fronts of buildings, light overhangs, the tops of buildings. And it's a very common um, method of strengthening a hanging structure, so like a bridge or a walkway. We also use triangles, but we don't call them triangles as often. Uh, we either call them trusses or buttresses. So the second type of way we use triangles would be in a buttress, which are these, these support walls that we see here in a lot of ancient um, dams, walls, castles. You can see this one kind of has a little more elegance and flair to it. And it's thrust against a wall or a heavy roof for additional support to counteract the force that's acting on the top, such as, you know, if there's a heavy roof or the wall is heavy, there's going to be a load. So this buttress acts as the counter force. We can also have a flying buttress. These are um, pretty much just for show. They're non-structural. They're not going to be super helpful. So this isn't actually a triangle or an arch. It's kind of a combination of both. It's non-structural. We use them a lot for aesthetics. A dome will be something similar to a circle, but a semicircle. So we see these in a lot of mosques and cathedrals. They're really beautiful. They let in light. Uh, and they allow you to have a lot of extra height uh, to a building as well. Oftentimes, all of the elements of the dome are in compression and they're compressing onto that center piece. So when you get into our program, you'll learn a lot more about tension and compression and two force members and all of the exciting structural forces. But uh, this lesson is specifically focusing on finding and identifying different geometry in these structures. Um, we can also use triangles in some basic type of building and development, such as post and beam. These are just using squares and triangles to build very basic houses. Um, but we don't call them squares and triangles, we call them posts and beams. So this is vertical and horizontal um, construction. As I mentioned with the, the semicircle and the dome, we have all of these pieces in compression and they're being held together by a tension ring. So these are putting tension back on the compressive members um, in, in the ring. So something like a football stadium or a circus tent will need to counterbalance that compression in the dome with tension. Finally, we use columns a lot. As I mentioned, these are kind of a combination of circles and arches. So they're really strong. This is from my Indo board, so it can at least hold my weight. And you'll see them all the time uh, used in combination with arches or with triangles. They are very strong structural pieces because they um, distribute the load across the arch pretty well and they're just strong structural pieces. So with that, we are going to use these newfound knowledge about how we can use boring triangles and arches and circles into actually really beautiful structural designs. So you can build domes, you can build houses, you can build bridges. And there's a really cool software where you are going to optimize a bridge design based on what you know about geometry and the strength of structural elements. So I would like to pause this first introductory video. Thank you for watching. I'm excited that you're here. And uh, please watch the video of how to download and log into the bridge design game. Uh, with that, I will 